What a mighty God we serve. Children of God, praise the Lord. Let the living praise the name of the Lord. Let the living praise 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 the Lord. Each day you get up is a different day altogether. Each day the Lord allows you to see the brightness of the day. To have the bread of the day is a very special day. Each day, the mighty man of Allah, each day, the rock of ages allows you to see any day the immortal and invisible God allows you to see is a great day, is a beautiful day, is an excellent day. Hallelujah. Each day, the Lord allows you to see is not by your power or by mind, just give him praise. Do you know each day the Lord allows you to see? He's telling you, hello, can we celebrate together? This is the day I have made. Let's come on celebrate it together. That's what exactly it is. So each day you see, no matter what the condition, no matter what the situation looks like, only lay now to lift up your hand and bless the name of the Lord. Are you hearing me? Each day is a special day. Each day is a peculiar day. Yesterday cannot look like today. And today cannot look like tomorrow. It's true in the same 24 hours, but the events God are fixing them are all different. So whenever you get up in the morning, you see a different day. Come on, give him praise. Whenever you get up, you see a new day, a beautiful day, a different day, a sunny day, a rainy day, windy day, cold day, or, or, or weather, summer, winter. Give him praise. It's not easy. It's not easy. For the Father, the Lord, allow you to see the brightness of the day. May his name be glorified. If you have died, if I have died, I wouldn't have been speaking right now. Everything the Bible says he created all things, including life, including bread. Everything we have on our lives, he is the giver. So let's keep praising him. Let's keep magnifying him. Let's keep honoring him. Let's keep adoring him. Let's keep worshiping him. Let's keep magnifying him. Let's keep exalting him. Let's keep honoring him for he is everything. For this God is too much a God. This God is so holy a God. This God is so kind a God. This God is so wonderful a God. May his name be praised, exalted, glorified and magnified forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Remember we're talking about waiting upon the Lord. You waiting till God will do it in his own way. You waiting when your miracle will happen according to the definition, according to the standard, according to the perfect will of God. So many people have gone away. So many people could not wait. So many people went astray. So this or this has happened for people. But no, 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 no. The Lord wants you to wait for him. The Lord wants you to wait upon him. The Lord wants you to wait until your miracle happens. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Stop being in the haste. Stop running away. Stop troubling yourself. If you have prayed and committed an issue in the hands of the Lord, you don't need to hasten up. There are people that when you pray for them now about a particular situation, we give God all the praise about that. In the next 20 minutes, they call you, I need prayer. 30 minutes, they call you, I need prayer. 40 minutes, they call you, I need prayer. Hour, and they call you. Before one hour, they call you five, six times. No, that's not faith. That's not the way to live. That's not the way to live. That's not the way to live. The Bible, the word of God said that the John shall live by faith. When you pray, believe it is happenable and it happens like that immediately and instantly. Hallelujah. We're talking about waiting upon the Lord shall we pray. My King and my God, everlasting Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus. The immortal and invisible God, the rank of ages, the Lord have been and will ever be. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forevermore. Father, as we come before your holy name, as we come before your mighty name, as we come before your righteous name, as we come before your excellent name, may your name alone be honored, adored, worshipped, and magnified in Jesus' name. Daddy, you are highly lifted up, you are highly honored, you are highly adored, you are highly magnified, and let that glory be above all the earth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, as a word is forthcoming for right now, let it come with power, let it come with unction, let it come with blessedness of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. And let the name of Christ alone be on our front of the Lord be our glory. Speak your word to us, O Lord. Minister this word of life to us. That at the end, 
have every cause to glorify the name of the Lord. For unto the Lord be all the glory. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Speak to us. That man with problem, that woman with problem, that man in the need, that woman in need, speak and minister to them all. Let there be healing, let there be deliverance, let there be miracle, let there be divine visitation, O Lord. Let the power of God and the glory of the hand of God flow in and move in and let Christ then be on our front the Lord, we are the glory. Thank you for the mighty answers to worship you. Hallowed be your name, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we decree. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. It's well with your spirit, it's well with your soul. Is where we are going out, is where we are coming in. Let the blessedness of the Lord and favor of God keep being your portion. You know, the needful to do right now is to share. Come on, so that that man will receive, that woman will receive, that boy will hear, and that God will hear. Just share, 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 share. Yeah, there is life in sharing. Sharing is caring the seed. To God be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. You know, we discussed about this topic. So many of us have been in a haste. They are in haste to marry. And they marry, they still have problems. The problem kept marking them time. They keep marking time at a particular place. Until the time. For every miracle to happen, there is a time. There's nobody that will not pass through this process I'm speaking about right now. Everybody must. I said everybody must pass through this process and procedure in life. Everybody must pass through it. Everybody must pass through this process and procedures of lives. Yes. There must be a waiting time in your life. There must be a time it is happening. There must be a time you feel like fidgeting, you feel like shaking, you feel like moving. There must be a time you seem, oh, where is God? Can it happen? Can it relax? Child of God, I say, relax. Seed of God, I say, relax. Relax, your man. Relax. That is a God who is alive. That is a God who is worthy. That is a God who is excellent. That is a God who has been and will ever be. I say, relax, your man. At the appointed time of God to have. Remember that the life you are living already has been programmed. It has been programmed by somebody. It has been programmed by the Lord Jesus Himself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The life you are living already has been programmed. So there's nothing you can do about it. God will say, wait, you now. Look, even the world, the world themselves are programmed December 25th as the only day. So you cannot judge by January, uh, by October, say, oh, or by June, say, I'm in a haste, I'm in a haste. Let's call the world. Let them celebrate Christmas. The world will not listen to it. The world that fixed it said it is once in a year that they will be fixing it. That's the world for you. Are you hearing me? So that's the word for you. So you can, even those of you, you waited and waited till another one year. Those of you that are celebrating their birthday, you waited till another one year before you celebrate. You cannot celebrate your birthday by January and celebrate again by March and celebrate again by June and celebrate again by October and celebrate again by this. No, 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 no. You cannot do all this. You have all the endurance to say it must be once in a year. For those of you that are celebrating it, I don't do that. I'm waiting upon the Lord. That day, I have reflection. Every of my bad day is the day of reflection to see how useless or how useful I have been in the Lord. I'm going to celebrate it at the feet of Jesus Christ. I was talking to a woman of God last week. Oh, this week. I said, thank God. God delivered me about all these stupid celebrations on time. Oh, all the, if I'm doing celebration, oh my God. People and people and people and people and the people who so celebrate my birthday, they will call me, they will send give this and that, and after that, Wahala will start. I will have problem. Because anyone that send you gift, you know, send gift. Anyone that send you witches, you know, send. Now trouble be that. So I'm not in anybody's trouble, and nobody's in my trouble. God just removed that stress. I have enough stress already. Then the strength of that day, he didn't commend my bad day, he didn't show up, he didn't, no, no. I removed the stress. Remove the stress from the side and face the real thing. Let's face the reality. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Anytime my children that day, today, my bad day, I will need them down. I pray for them. I say, the uselessness you have been, let you go, but the usefulness in you, let them come out right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray together and ask God for a better tomorrow. But that's not what I'm talking today. What we're talking about today is this. What will be your mood? What will you do when you're passing a trial time? Every human being must pass a trial time. 
Every trial time is there. We're not all in the same mood. That is why we don't preach the same thing every time. God keep on giving us different topics to preach. Everybody's not in the same mood. There are people who are in happy mood. There are people who are in debt mood. There are people who are in angry mood. There are people who are in sick mood. There are people who are in bereaved mood. There are people who are in family crisis mood. There are people who are in family happiness mood. Different mood. Different mood. There are people that have problems in their marriages. They are in different mood altogether. There are people that don't have problems in their marriage, but out the prop people surrendering them in their marriage are problems today. Before you understand it, they hear one bad news or the other bad news. But my prayer is that you will not hear a bad news this time around. You will hear a good news. May God remove and then turn every bad news to good news in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And let the name of God alone be glorified. For unto the Lord be all the glory. Hallelujah. What a great God, what a mighty God, what a loving Father, what an excellent Jehovah. To him alone be all the glory. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Blessed be the name of Jehovah. Blessed be the name of mighty man of valor. The great I am that I am, the loving and savior of all the world. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. He is so great. He is so real. He is so wonderful. He is so excellent. May his name be magnified forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So what will be your mood, beloved of God? And because this thing will happen, what will you be doing when waiting upon the Lord? Sometimes it's like you get fed up. No, don't get fed up. It happened to any man of God, any woman of God, any great man that made this, you know, in a righteous way, it must happen to that person. There must be a time you will wait. Hmm. It's me. You're marking time. You're not marking time. Is God is creating something wonderful, great, and renewed in you. You will soon smile. Are you hearing me? You look so popular. You look so known. Yeah. Not knowing that God wants to really introduce you to the reality of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What will, it, what will be your mood? What will be your attitude? What are the things you got to be doing when you are in such a mood of life? People are talking here. People are talking there. People are saying this. People are saying this. People are saying that. What will be your mood? What will be your attitude? What will you be doing at a time like this? You know, you don't need to be quiet. Something must be done. And what is it that you'll be doing? What you'll be doing is, number one, you will start with prayers. Whenever there is a waiting time in your life. Whenever you're waiting upon the Lord, one of the activities you must create for yourself is prayers. Is prayers. Is prayers. You go into prayer. Funny thing is this prayer mood is this. There are certain times you'll be in a problem and you'll be praying. It seems as if God has gone. God, God just left. Holy Ghost went on transfer and Jesus went on leave. It seems as if nothing is happening. No. Go into, go into, continue your prayers. Are you hearing me? Continue with your prayers. Go ahead. God is hearing. Remember, you are praying the prayer. You're not the one that received the prayer. You're not the one that hears the prayers. Go ahead, praying. Go ahead, seeking the face of the Lord. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, child of God. Go ahead. Don't think that you're fed up with prayers. After three years, after four years, you say, I can't continue. No. Bible said, look at what the Bible said about the prayer, the type of prayer he wants us to pray. It's in First Thessalonians chapter, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. This is the kind of prayers the Bible wants us to pray. And what is he saying? That say pray without season. Do you know what he prays without season? Every minute you're praying. When you are alone, you are praying. When you are in your bedroom, you are praying. When you are driving, you are praying. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Every slightest time you are lying down, you are prayed already, you are already praying again. That is praying with the out season. Praying until the answer comes. Praying until something happens. Praying until God visits you. Praying until a miracle happens. Praying until a mighty hand of God happens. Praying until a new thing happens. Praying until something great happens. Don't get tired of prayer. Prayer is you and God communicating. 
You know, some people will be on phone with their beloved one for one hour, for two hours, for three hours, talking and talking and talking. Oh, if it is that of chatting, oh, it lasts. Some people chat throughout the night for a very long time. Then how much more will you and God? Don't get weary. You are in a situation you don't like. Pray. You are in a situation you like. Praise. Are you hearing me? You are you just well with your soul, spirit, and body. You are just excited. Then begin to praise him. Magnify him. Praise him. But when you are in a situation that you don't like, begin to pray. 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 Pray and seek the face of the Lord. You see that? When you are in a situation, don't open your mouth, tell God the way you feel. Some people say, I don't know how to pray. No, no, no. That's not how you can say you don't know how to pray. That's not how you say you can say you don't know how to pray. How are you feeling it? Tell God about it. He's a God that hears you. Yes, other people will join you in prayer, but you praying for yourself helps you more and gives you greater backbone. When you are praying for yourself, I tell you, you're backing up yourself, you're praying for others, and you're praying for yourself, if you raise your faith. But whenever you ask people to keep praying for you, you're not praying for yourself, you relax and all. Definitely, definitely, I tell you, you don't know how much they're praying. And they might not equally be praying. Because the Bible said, just when you ask 10 people to pray, it might be one or two, or just one among the 10 will be praying for you. As you, the, the way you felt it, or the way you think it. Because the Bible said, no man think, every man is thinking about the thing of his own. No man care for things of Christ anymore. Everybody's thinking about his own welfare. How he shall be well with him. How he's going to be in the number one. How he's going to be on top. How he's going to be this. Thank God that it's only God that hears prayers and answers a prayer. We do the praying and God do the answering. If not, a lot of people would have weighed a lot of people down by the kind of negative prayers they are praying for them. Is it you? I have had some people say, this person, I tell you, you will not succeed. I tell you, you will not succeed. Father, I decree it's not going to succeed. You will let that, 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 that. One lady like that was talking to me about what the elder pastor did or the they call it senior pastor i'll call it more elderly pastor he said okay what the senior pastor did, did that, 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 that. he said he went to the altar of the senior pastor and knelt down hey i said god i'm kneeling down at this altar why i'm kneeling down is that this pastor has provoked me he has done what he's not supposed to do in the name of jesus christ of not the son of the living transfer him from here transfer him from here bewitchments transfer him from here transfer him from here she was so bold the day she was telling me this i was looking at her i become too uh, careful of her and them that i know that can pray such prayers by the time they were doing bewitchment before understanding the man was removed and he came back and said eh Mm -hmm. He said, you are local almighty. Mm -hmm. You said you are this. Mm -hmm. That one is bewitchment and not actually prayers. Keep praying for yourself. The Bible said, pray without season. Is somebody hearing me? Pray without season. The Lord Jesus showed us example and practical example of how he prayed. He prayed. He prayed. He prayed. The kind of prayers he prayed. He prayed and forgot himself. He so much prayed. Look at what the Bible said in the book of Luke chapter 22 verse 44. Child of God, you've not prayed enough. So don't be weakened that you've not prayed enough. Look at what the Bible said in Luke chapter 22 verse, from verse 44. Chapter Luke chapter 22 from verse 44. Luke 22 from verse number 44. The Bible said, I'm being in an agony. Che! He had a body in. He had a body, he was in an agony. Mashari mama la 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 la. The Bible says, I'm being in an agony. He prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. He prayed that the sweat that was coming out of him was pouring out, was poured. He so prayed. He was in an agony. If Jesus can agonize like this, if the King of Kings can agonize like this, if the man of war could agonize like this, how much more you? How much more me? We need these prayers more than him. Look at verse 45. And when he rose up from prayers and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. While is somebody, 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 is agonizing. Somebody was sleeping. But the sleep was not a sweet one. No. The Bible said they were sleeping for sorrow because Jesus told them, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to depart. How do you feel when your beloved one, when your wife, when your husband, even when your child, when your father, 
when your mother just called you, sit you down, uh, you see he's not sick, you see he's not having a headache, and he's telling you by tomorrow you will not see me again. I am going. I will go. Or when does you speak with a beloved father, a beloved mother, a beloved... He said, but I spoke with him not day before yesterday or this. How can you tell me he is dead? How can you tell me he's gone? Yes. That's the way the apostles were feeling. The Bible said they were sleeping, but they were sleeping for sorrow. Okay? The kind of prayer I see right now, remember, the, the tools or instrument of prayers when you are in such a situation, is not that God will change his mind about you. Jesus did not pray here. You saw him praying and praying and that God, uh, uh, can you do this? And uh, can you do this? And uh, can you do this? Lord, 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 he was praying the same prayer and praying the same prayer and praying the same prayer. What was his prayer? Oh, what was his prayer? Look at his prayer in verse 42. He, he, he look at his prayer in 42. He prayed and discovered it's a wrong prayer. Many times we pray a wrong prayer and we stay longer than we are supposed to stay in a particular situation. Look at what happened in the book of the same Matthew, uh, sorry, Luke chapter 22, verse 42. Luke 22, verse 42. Now, Luke 22, verse 42. The Bible said, saying, look at what he was praying. Because from 41, he said, and he went uh, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone cast. And kneeling down and prayed. He knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. He said, No, this is a wrong prayer. That's why we I came. No, that's an agreement. No. Okay. Nevertheless, let not my will, but thy will be done. That was when he had peace. The moment he said this, look at what happened in 43, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Eh? Angel appeared. He, when he was praying wrong prayers, when he was praying, feeling himself, I love this disciple so much. Hey, the family of Mary and Martha, Lazarus, their brother. Oh, this is a very big, great, glorious family. Oh, look at Salome, the women that were helping me. Ah, oh, Salome, Ephemia. All these women that were helping me. Oh, how can I miss them? Apostle Paul, uh, Apostle Peter, uh, I've been wonderful with the family, the mother-in-law. Oh, they keep preparing meal for all. How can I meet these people? You know, when you are thinking about the things that are there, you forget about the thing that will come. He was thinking about the thing present. But when he came to realization, I said this was an agreement to, that was made to, over there in heaven. He said, nevertheless, not my will, not my will, but that will be done. The, the highest prayer is God, that will be done. Can you let go? Why are you still quarreling with that man of God, with that woman of God? Why are you quarreling with that sister, with this person, with this person? Why not let go? Why not say, God, that will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. That was one of my sons in the Lord. You know, where he parked his vehicle close to his house, some people got drunk in the night. They came over there, but they, but they, but they, but they hit the uh, vehicle, and the vehicle hit the mother. Those people, instead of them to wait, they ran away. The villagers caught them and heard them before my son in the Lord could come back. When my son came back, they brought the security people there. They seized their vehicle. My son, in, my son went and took care of the mother and took very good care of the mother. You see to that? And those people were asked to come to place, bring so, 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 so. They were wasting, wasting time and wasting time. I called my son. I said, look, release these people. Let them go. He said, daddy, I spent money in the hospital. Did these people, how can they be wicked? They never came to care for the money. My vehicle that they bashed has been there. They didn't come and ask for it. This and they, they, I said, you have every reason to hold them in bondage. You have every reason to hold against them. But let, let go. Let's go. Let, let's go. Forget. Let go. Mm, he called me back and said, daddy, I have done it the way you did it. She told me. He told me, have peace. Come on. When somebody has not come to ask you for forgiveness and you forgive, that is when you are a real child of God. And not that person come, you balance, uh -huh, you become a local almighty. Uh -huh. Why did you do this? The person will explain. You throw another question, the person will explain. You throw another question, the person will explain. You'll be nodding your head, you'll be shaking your head, you'll be doing it. No, child of God. Every child of God is a child of great destiny. 
Let's not quench the light of God in you. May you not help yourself to quench the light in you. When you are in such a position, when you're passing through trials of life, when God is about blending you, your best companion will be God. So that you tell him, Daddy, look at the way he's spending me. You are not praying now that God will not pass it through experience of life. You must pass through that experience of life so that you become great. That's what is called growth pain. There are some pains you must have in life if you want to grow. Those pains must come to you if you really want to grow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Growth pain. Growth pain. Growth pain. They must happen. They must appear if you really want to go further. If you really want to grow, there must be some pains you must pass through in life. When you pass them through this pain, you ignore the pain. When you pass through this pain, you ignore the pains. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you pass through such pain, you ignore the pain. And you go ahead and you move on and you move forward and you move ahead to the glory of God. And at the end of the day, the name of Christ alone shall be praised, worshipped, and glorified in your life forevermore. Hallelujah. For unto the Lord our King and our God, our Father, our Savior, be our glory. For great is the faithfulness of our God. To God be our glory in Jesus' name. Prayer is what you needed. Continue praying. You can ask people to pray for me. When they are praying for you, stop sleeping. Not they ask them to pray for you. And I'm tired of prayer. I cannot continue with prayers anymore. Prayer has failed me. No, no, no. Prayer cannot fail you. When you're saying that prayer has failed you, you're talking that God has failed you. Only that you didn't know the right application of prayers. You didn't know the right application of prayers. You saw the one Jesus prayed there and he changed his mind immediately and said, No, this is a very wrong prayer. It's true, I am God, I came in human flesh, no, but the flesh of human being cannot subdue me from doing the will of my Father that is in heaven. We have agreed concerning this type of death that I got to pass through. He prayed and said, nevertheless, that will be done, not my will. Can you begin to talk to God and say, Father, not my will, but I will. 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 May the will of the Most High happen. May the will of the Most High be in Allah. May the will of our most high God happen in our individual lives in Jesus name so that is number one thing you must have to do prayers resort to prayers resort to prayers when everybody has slept wake up to pray when everybody has gone you have no job nothing seems moving continue praying not that when they, you know some people don't know, can pray when they feel that everybody has gone they have gone to work i'm the one alone they put their hand on their head and they begin to think they will think from pillar to pool to tree to this and that thinking bible said by taking thought you know getting worried getting anxieties in you bible said by getting worried you cannot make your hair to be white you cannot make your hair to be black you cannot change the color of your hair by taking thought by getting worried by living in anxieties the best thing is to get back to him. The best thing is to get back to the honor of life. The best thing is to get back to the maker of life. The God of heaven and earth, the maker of life. He is our everything. He is the God and Lord and rock that we needed. He is everything that we desire. So whenever you are in such a situation, resort back to prayers again. You see to that, for those of all that can speak in tongue, that's an added, added advantage. Come on, you blaster in tongue, get into tongue, makala bakunda shiri ababa. By the time you speak one hour, by the time you speak two hours, oh come on, you must have been done in the spiritual realm before you swim in or higher again. So there's no overdose of prayers. Are you hearing me? Prayer has no overdose. You keep praying and praying. If it has overdose, Bible wouldn't have told us in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, where we read that we should pray without season. You pray until answer come. You pray until you, let God put a smile in your mouth. The Bible says, You that make mention of the Lord, give him no rest until he establishes you. So, yes, the, uh, uh, you, 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 you tell God, me, I am not going to give you rest for anything. I am not going to give you rest for anything. No, 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 no. Bible have so, told us that if God have said that to us, if God has spoken to us about that, then why can't we continue? That's an opportunity given to us. That's a, a, a grace God has given to us that we will continue in prayers in the day, in the night, in the afternoon, and all day long. We go ahead praying and seeking the name of the Lord. I say, my King and my God. No, 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 no. 
I am here. I am here, Lord. You must have to hear me. You must have to listen to me. God is there to make you great again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is there to do that for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. To so don't give God rest. Oh, mama, 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 mama. Don't give God rest. Look at what the Bible said. Yes, the, the word of God is forever and ever settled. In the book of Isaiah chapter 62, verse 7. 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 And give him no rest. Hallelujah. And give him no rest. Can we start from verse 6? Can we start from verse 6? Verse 6 said, I have said watchman, I have said watchman upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. Christian never hold their peace day nor night. You that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent. God have set watchman over you. God have said power people, a spiritual being to take care of you. God have said your solu the solution over your problem round about you. The Bible said, the word of God said, you that make mention of the Lord, give him no rest, keep not silent. I have set watchman upon you that Isaiah chapter 62 from verse number 6. Isaiah chapter, uh, Isaiah chapter 62 from verse number 6. I have set watchman upon thy wall. O Jerusalem, Christian, never hold their peace. Day nor night, you that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent. Verse 7, and give him no rest to establish until he make Jerusalem a praise in the law in the earth. Jerusalem is you. Let me give you a secret. There's one sister like that, she has no job, she keep on calling upon the name of the Lord. It seems as if she was wasting her time. But when she realizes the power of prayer, she, every day she make it a point that she's going to pray for three hours. Since I have nothing to do when people are up, when they are telling me they are putting in two, two, three, four, five hours in their job, let me see how many hours I can put in in the presence of the Lord. So when people leave, when they go, the young man, the, the lady will begin to pray. When they come back and say, wow, I put six, seven, eight, nine hours today, she will tell them, I put in six hours today with the Lord. I put in seven hours today with the Lord. People become challenged, and people, the devil say, ah, ah, this one is going to have work. Go. Ah, tomorrow now, this one become a powerful prayer warrior. And before I understand it, he has a job. He has a very good job that took his time that he has not even time to eat. How much more to pray again? When the lady realizes, say, ah, no, I think I need to quit from this job. This job is too tight. It's giving me money, but it's stopping my time. No, 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 no. When he wanted to quit, the people of the company said, no, no, you can't quit. We've been looking for people like you. Look, any product you got out of prayers is a superior one. It's an admirable one. It's an encouraging one. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Any product you got out of prayers. Anything you got out of prayer is a spiritual one, is a great one, is a mighty one. And before you understand it, they send them away, ready to amend for you. They give her time. Even during time of break, they give up to an hour, 30 minutes, when others have one hour. They give her one hour, 30 minutes. She used one hour to pray, and used 30 minutes to eat. You tell me you're a full-time wife, housewife, you're a full-time in the house. I don't have job, daddy. I don't have job. You have a better job to do. Prayer is a great job. Prayer is a greater job, and the pay is higher. When God pays you, hey, when God becomes the one that pays you, put in prayers. Are you hearing me? Don't let the devil to use that position to fool you. Don't let him to use that position to bundle you. Don't let him to use that position to cripple you. Tell him, say, no, no, I must be in prayers. I must be in prayers. I must be in prayers. I must pray. And seek the face of the Lord. Hallelujah. You begin to call upon the name of the Lord. You begin to pray. You begin to pray. You begin to call upon the name of Jehovah. And say, Lord, it is me and you. Mama la rambra in da 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 da. You set your watch. You set your clock. And say, me. <laughs> Me, I know how far I can go. I know how far I can go. Oh, mama, 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 I know how far I can go. By the time you're praying for one hour, you're praying for two hours, job will say, devil will say, release his job, release his job. He is sitting in the kingdom too much. He's seeking the, he's, he, he, look at him, talking in tongue for two hours, three hours. We couldn't even hear what he's saying. No, 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 
No, no, no, no. Give him job. Give him his work. Let him go back. Let him go back. Let him go back. Let him go back. Makala rabra in da 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 da. Here, Ibrahala la 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 la. Makanda in a muma shari Ibrahala la la la. We give God a praise. Hallelujah. Oh, we give God all the worship and all the adoration. We give him all the thanks, give him forever and ever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. What another thing you got to do, you organize fasting. You organize fasting for yourself. Are you hearing me? Second thing you got to be doing during this time of trial is fasting. It's fasting. You go into fasting, seek the face of the Lord. The Jews were one time in such a panic. They were one time in such a pain. The Jews were one time in such a trouble. How do they handle the case? How do they get about their case? You're not the first person to be in the situation you are today. The Bible said it's better to pray than to complain. You see to that, we will not go on complaining every time about one situation. Pray. Add fasting to your prayer. You know, why do you add fasting? Fasting is that when the body is becoming so robust and so relaxed, you have to quicken it again by fasting to tell the body that the spirit is controlling the body and not the body controlling the spirit. you got to add fasting to that. Child of God, add fasting to your prayer. If you want it to be more effective, more powerful, add fasting to that and see what is going to happen. Look at what Esther told uh, Mordecai, in the book of Esther chapter 4 verse 16. Esther chapter 4 verse 16. Okay, if we start chapter 4 verse 3 first of all. Let's read what happened in verse 3. In verse 3. Esther chapter 4 verse 3 first of all. Esther chapter 4 verse 3. Let's start with verse 3. And the Bible said, And in every province, wheresoever the king commanded, and his decree came there, was a great mourning among the Jews, and fasting and weeping and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. They were praying because they said they would be eliminated. They were praying because they said they would be dealt with. You see, to that, they are praying and praying just like a many you know, tribes are praying in Nigeria right now because some people rose up and said they will eliminate others. Others got up and felt that they are more important, that they, they are born while the others were invited to the here on earth. And they resort into prayers. And today God is giving them solution. In every situation you are, pray and add fasting to it. And you see what God is going to do. The semester, the semester chapter 4 verse 16. Look at what happened. He gave out a go. Gather together all the Jews that are in the present, that are in Shushan, and fast for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night nor day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. If I perish, I perish. Praying and fasting will make you to take a bigger risk. And as you take the risk, you will succeed in Jesus' name. As you take the risk, you will succeed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. And they went in the first day. Fasting is another thing that will help you. You don't know how to fast. Let me tell you. If you are eating three times every day, three times every day for one week, for one month, for six months, you are breeding a lot of germs inside of you. Even medically, there are some places you go, you'll be asked not to go to with food throughout the day. If you want to detoxify yourself and want your system to be clean, go for three days without food. You only eat fruits and leaves and vegetables. You saw when Daniel did it now. They were eating fruits, leaves, and vegetable, and what happened? They look fresh. Come on. Sometimes when you look some men of God, you say, ah, this one is looking so fresh. This one is looking so clean. They don't have special cream they are using. They don't have special food they are eating. They go into a lot of praying and fasting, and the glory of heaven will be seen upon their life. And you say, ah, this one look fine. This one look so sharp. This one look this. This one look this. This one look the other one. Thank God that nobody says that men of God look sexy. They look glorious. They look powerful. They look unshonized. They look responsible. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the men that have made up their mind to go to heaven. I'm talking about the men of God that have made up their mind to stand for God and for God alone. So a lot of people have used prayer and prayer and prayer and prayer to subdue and subdue a lot of things. 
Oh, look at what happened in the book of Ezra chapter 8 verse 23. Ezra chapter 8 verse 23. When they have, they have a problem, they go into fasting. Calling upon the name of the Lord. Fasting will make them to be concentrated. Fasting will make them not to look into the world, but concentrated. In the book of Ezra chapter 8 verse 23. Ezra chapter, uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. If, okay, let's start, eight, let's start from 21. Ezra chapter 8 from verse 21. Ezra chapter 8 from verse 21. Then I proclaimed the fast there at the river of Ahava. That we might afflict ourselves. Have you seen it? That we might afflict ourselves before our God. To seek of him a right way for us. And for our little one. And for all our substance. They want to afflict the body. They want to afflict themselves. So that the body will be quiet. And the soul and spirit will be alive. So that they will have the leading of the Holy Spirit. So many of us have so eaten. Apart from the fasting some people did. Uh, maybe first, second, third, fourth, January. They have relied. No, add fasting to that. I'm not saying you should be fasting and fasting. Some people come and say, I'm fasting for 100 days. I will look at them. Who told you to do that? Do you see it anywhere in the Bible? They sometimes quote to me. I said, okay, if that's what you mean, it's okay. Some will tell me that God said, they will sometimes and quote that Jesus said he will do greater work shall we do than the what he did. But he was talking about greater miracles. Greater miracles and not well, if it is greater fasting, it's okay. But I know that the grace of God is an individual, it's not even in fasting. The grace is an individual, the grace is in the Lord Jesus, He's the giver of grace. There are people I know that have fasted for 40 days for three, four, five times, they don't have a, a, every power to cast away flies. It depends on how you are moving with your God. So make fasting for 100 days. Somebody was telling me it's fasting for 100 days. I said, what's that? He said, it's fasting from 6 to 12. I said, 6 in the morning to 12. I said, sometimes by 4 o'clock in the evening, I've not even eaten. I'm not even fasting. I've become so busy. Well, that, if that is what you call fast, I begin to laugh. Well, we are on different mood. If you're fasting at 6 to 12, can you increase it, please? You are stop being a baby Christian. Go ahead and be a true Richard of God to the glory of God. How can you say me you don't have a job when prayer is the better job? The devil don't want people to be employed in the ministry of prayers. And that is why he allowed them to be, be jobless. He allowed this to happen to them and still give them worries. Somebody told me that I couldn't sleep. I could not. He said, you. He said, Daddy, try the night. I, I said, oh God, I deserve such a gift. Oh, I deserve such a gift. You mean you don't sleep in the night? What do you do? He said, I talk from one end of the bed. And I said, come on, convert it into usefulness. Convert that lemon into lemonade. Come on, convert into it into gold. Come on, convert into youthfulness. Mama, yeah, yeah, you don't sleep. And the people are sleeping from 10 o'clock. You start doing baba, la, da, baba, la, da, baba, yeah, yeah, baba, yeah, yeah, baba, ra, bra, can, da, 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 da. You are doing it till 11. You are doing it till 12. You are doing it till 1. You are doing it till 2. You are doing it. Do it three, four days. He said, that you. I did it the first day, second day, third day. Sleep came by force. I said, eh. Have you seen it? Don't allow the devil to take advantage of you. Every situation the devil threw at you to mess you up, make use of it. Child of God, I hear what I'm saying. Make use of every God-given opportunity and seek the face of the Lord everywhere. Look at what the same Ezra said in Ezra chapter 8. Look at it. We are reading chapter 8. Let's see verse, uh, let's see verse 23 now. The same Ezra, Ezra chapter 8 verse 23. So we fasted and besought our God for this and he was entreated of all. We fasted. We achieve together through fasting. Child of God, you can do general fasting, collective fasting, or individual fasting. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Go back to God in prayers. Go back to God in fasting. Come on, come on. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4. Nehemiah was there in prayers again. Look at this great man. They used prayer to achieve. We have read Jesus of Nazareth. They used fasting. They used fasting. And he came to part. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4. Nehemiah chapter 4, 1 verse 4. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4. And the Bible said, He came to pass when I heard this word, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. He mourned, he waited upon the name of the Lord, he fasted, he prayed. 
He saw the face of the Lord. Look at what the king did. Look at how he defeated his enemies in the book of 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 22 verse 12. 1 Kings chapter 21 verse, you see to that. Okay, verse 12. Verse 12. Verse 12. Okay? Look at, he never knew the first thing they proclaimed was what killed them. They proclaimed the fast and set no board on high among the people. Ahab, the wife of Ahab, planned this evil. They proclaimed the fast, even when they want to do evil. Have you seen occultic men are doing even more fasting than we do? A lot of people are in occultism. They are doing a lot of fasting and fasting and fasting and fasting. They will sometimes tell you they will do 21 days without what dry fasting. You know? I don't know what people call dry fasting, but dry fasting I know is that if you're fasting right now, maybe you start from 6 in the morning. You fast to 6 in the evening until 6 in the morning again. That is 24 hours without eating anything. That is what is called dry fasting. Some people are, are thinking that when you fast from 6 to 6 without water, it's called dry fasting. No, that one is not dry fasting. That one is not dry fasting, but I want to advise you, any fasting you are doing, dry fasting, that is more than three days, take a lot of water. Are you hearing me? Anytime you are fasting, it's dry fasting, the one you are not eating for throughout the day, throughout the night, throughout the day, throughout the night, throughout the day, throughout the night. If you are fasting, if it is more than three days, take a lot of water. By the third day, the water in your system will change. A lot of toxin will be injected into your system. When you drink water and drink water, go and urinate, you will see a lot of this thing will go away. Some people that have adipose tissue, this big muscle that is here, Take them into dry fasting for one week without just with water alone for one week before you understand it, their body will come flat again. Their body become flat like that of a woman again. You know, some women feel they have muscle. One of my daughters he said, that day, I'm strong. My little girl said, that day, I'm strong. I said, who told you? She would do like this. No muscle will come out. I said, that is, I said, you don't have any muscle. You are a woman. Sit down. Sit down. God created you beautiful. And gloriously to the glory of God's holy name. Hallelujah. We are wonderfully created. Men are beautifully, wonderfully created in their own. Women are beautifully created in their own by the same God. And this is God of honor. This is God of power. This is God of mind. This is God of majesty. And we bless his name forevermore in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We worship this great king. We worship the ancient of the day. We worship Emmanuel. Oh, mama, 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 to God our Lord and our King and our Father, be all the glory in Jesus' mighty name we pray. What is the next thing we're going to read? Do after we have fasted, after we have fasted, yes, and saw the face of the Lord after we prayed and then fasted, the next thing is the word of God. The next thing is the word of God. The next thing is the word of God. You read the Bible, the word of God. You search the scripture in the morning, search the scripture in the evening. What is God saying about this situation? Do you know that sometimes we pray and pray and miss? No, no, no. Sometimes we pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. You have to ask yourself a question and say, what is the word saying? Eh? What is the word saying? What is the word of God talking about me? What is it the, the word saying? You see, by the time you know what the word of God is talking about you, what the word of God is saying about you, oh my God, then you'll be able to excel. So many people are praying and praying and praying like one brother. He said for one year, for three years, for five years, for six years, for ten years, he was praying one prayer. You know, he went to the man of God. The man of God is a holiness preacher, uh, W.F. Kumiye of Deeper Life, uh, uh, you know, Deeper Life Church. Every day when Kumiye prayed, Kumiye would say, oh, may God give you spirit of long suffering, long suffering. The brother never knew what long suffering means. He was praying for long suffering. He said he went into dry fasting. He went into days of praying and fasting and said, God, give me long suffering. God, give me long suffering. God, give me long suffering. He was praying for long suffering. He was praying for five years, for 10 years. He, he just liked the word long suffering. He never knew what it means. He was praying and praying. One day he was telling me a story of his life, how his pastors were dealing with him, how the wife was dealing with him. Until he told me the story that he prayed for years for long suffering. I said, thank God for you. If not for that long suffering, you prayed, though you didn't know what it means. So if you have not prayed for this long suffering, no, ha 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 ha. But now you must have killed human beings. 
You must have killed somebody. Because all these things you are telling me that is happening in your life, within you, around about you, is ready to come about. And people will forgive easily. No, 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 the word of God. Are you hearing me? Read the scripture. Know the word of God. And know what the Bible is saying. Psalm 119 verse 11. Psalm 119 verse 11. Look at what the scripture said. Oh, my, 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 my. Psalm 119 verse 11. That word, Psalm 119 verse 11. It said, The word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You have to hide the word of God. Your word have I hid in my mind, in my heart. Your word have I hid in my heart, Lord, that I will not sin against you, that I will not go contrary. When the Bible said, Thou shalt not lie, yeah, the word of God told me not to lie. The Bible said, Thou shalt not uh, kill. The Bible said, The Bible said, Thou shalt not go into immorality or this or that. Yes, yeah, that's what the Bible, the word of God said. That word have I hid in my heart, that I will not sin against you. The time of your waiting is the time of your making. Are you hearing me? The time of your mate. Don't wait for God. Don't allow God to, 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 to handle you in this time of waiting without making you. Allow yourself to be mad. St. Paul said for three years he was in Arabian desert. Studying the word of God. Looking for the word of God. Looking for the truth and the interpretation of the truth. Don't waste this time. Don't waste this time. If you are not married here right now, you are hearing my word. This is a very good opportunity for you to make great peace with God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? By the time you get married, marriage is full of load. Children will come. If you are a woman, you will tend to your husband. You will tend to your children. You will tend to many people. You might not have much time again but now you're still a youth use this time god is not delaying you but god is trying to make you allow yourself to be mad allow yourself to be mad allow yourself to be broken allow the word of god to get you broken child of god in a situation like this you need prayers in a situation like this you need fasting in a situation like this you need the word of god look at what the bible said in the same psalm 119 look at verse 9 psalm 119 look at verse 9 psalm 119 look at verse 9 the bible said Wherewith thou shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Where can a young man make himself glorious? Where can a young man make himself clean? Where can a young man make himself pure? By taking heed to the word of God. Get back to the word of God. Tell people the Bible said. I know what the Bible said about me. You know, when I came in contact with the man called Kenny Hagen of the United States of America, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Ah! I said, what a great man. The man told, said he had read many parts of the Bible several times. Several times. But he said he had read his New Testament, the Bible. He had finished reading the New Testament. He will read. And so I think he said he has read it for about 150 times. He will start from Matthew to Revelation. Matthew to Revelation. Matthew to Revelation. Matthew to Revelation. He said he had finished reading it for 150 times. Whenever you say, he said, they were somewhere Sunday. Somebody was talking about something. He told the person, I know about 25 scriptures that is against what you are telling me to do. I will not do it. Because you don't know the scripture, they will put you from there. They will pour water on your head. They will pour coconut water on your head again. They will tell you to go and buy goat. You go and buy goat. They go to water for you. They will tell you to put this in, in your mouth. Don't talk. Close your eye. And they get you involved into ritualism because you don't know the Bible. You don't know the word of God. So many even have been in some churches. I said everybody lift their Bible. The people will lift up their Bible and say hang it up. They will lift their Bible and hang up their Bible. They will lift up their Bible like this and they will hold on their Bible. And I will speak and say, if you know you have read this Bible from Genesis to Revelation, bring it down. You see, ah. I said, I said, do you hear what I said? Did you hear me? About two, three, four people. Oh my God. Including a lot of us, men of God. They keep holding it. I said, ah, ah. You mean you've not finished reading the Bible once? Twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. Then what are you preaching to people? If you have not read the Bible for the first time, if you are listening to me, and you have not finished reading your Bible for the first time, second time, third time, I mean, you are yet to start. If you have been in Christianity up to three years and you have not finished your Bible one, twice and thrice, come on, you are missing something somewhere. All the people that are very close to me, the first assignment I'll give to them is start reading their Bible from Genesis to Revelation, from Genesis to Revelation. One of my daughters from Philippines that lives in China, I gave her that assignment one day. 
I said, you must have to. She said, Daddy, because of, I said, you must have to. She read and stopped somewhere and she kicked up. Before understanding, she finished it. One of my daughters in London again. That was about five, six years ago. I gave her that assignment. She finished up. I said, I want to read it on my own again. I, she told me, I got a lot of things. We really were getting a lot of things. I met one woman of God. I gave her that assignment. I said, come on. You need to read the word of God. So that you don't quote the Bible out of context. So that you know what it says in Genesis. Know what it says in Leviticus. Know what he said in Ezra, know what he said in, in the Psalm, know what he says in Proverbs, know what he said in Matthew, know what he said in Man, know what he said in Thessalonians, in Thessalonians, know what he said in Jude, and know what he said in Revelation. Then, by the time you know what the word of God has said, you don't have trouble anymore. You don't need to trouble yourself anymore. You need to live by the standard of the word of God. You need to live by the word of God. For word of God is life and word of God is power. When you don't have the word of God, you don't have life. But when you have the word of God, you have life. Child of God, bend down. Where are you running to? You say in the head, why being in the much head? Sit down. Bend down and read the word of God. And read the word of God. Child of God, learn how to read the Bible, the word of God. Are you hearing me? In any part of the world, you're hearing my voice this morning or this night or this afternoon. Some of us, it is morning. Some of us, it is afternoon. Some of us, it is evening. Here in Africa, Nigeria, it is evening time. So, go back to the word of God. You may be passing through experience of life and God is allowing you to be delayed in that place because you have not read enough of the word of God. Go back and read the word of God. Go back and read the word of God. Look at what Psalm 119 verse 16 said. I just love this Psalm 119. Oh my God. I just love it. I just love it. I just love it. Look at Psalm 119. Look at verse 16. He said, I will delight myself in thy status. I will not forget thy word. I will delight myself in thy status. I will not forget thy word. Have you forgotten the word of God? No, don't forget the word of God. I will not forget thy word. Look at the look at verse 17 of the same Psalm 119. Look at verse 17. He said, Be bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. God bless me so that I'm going to live and keep your word. Beloved of God, go on with the word of God. Go on with the word of God. Look at verse 28 of the same Psalm 119. Look at verse 28. The Bible says, My soul melted for heaviness. Strength, strengthen that me according to thy word. You know, his soul have melted it to God. But your word said, The joy of the Lord is my strength. And the Lord God is my strength. So, strengthen me. It's by the time you know what the Bible said that you will know what to pray. Stop being in ignorance and living in ignorance and walking in ignorance and then passing trials in ignorance. That's what God wants to make it out of every trial in every child of God. God wants you to come out with something beautiful. God wants you to come out with something excellent. Don't tell people you are not employed when there is an employment of prayers. Let me tell you, any person that lives in prayers, any person that lives in, lives in fasting and read the, read the word of God is a spiritual importer. And what you import on earth is bigger and far greater than any physical thing that is being imported. Every prayer word Every intercessor is an importer. He pours heaven to the earth. That's what I keep telling people. Oh my God. Look at what Psalm 119, verse 38 still said about the word of God. It says, Establish the word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy to thy faith to thy fear. It says, Establish the word. Establish the word in me. Can you pray this prayer? God, establish your word in my heart. That when I'm thinking, I'm taking the word. When I'm talking, I'm talking the word. When I'm preaching, I'm preaching the word. But because you don't know the scripture, hey, I don't know what the Bible said about here. Study the Bible. Bible says study to show that self approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Child of God, are you hearing me? Whenever you are waiting upon God, you are not waiting in emptiness. So many of us are waiting with our prayer. So many of us are waiting with our fasting. So many of of us are waiting without reading the word of God. And when you're waiting in emptiness, you end up having emptiness. How can you get in? How can you have such a rare opportunity and you not come back shining? Job has such opportunity and Job came out a smiling person. Job came out a glorious person. Job came out far blessed than how he entered.
How can God be dealing with you? How can you be in such a situation? And you're not coming out with something beautiful. You're not coming out with something joyous. You're not coming out with something glorious. No, 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 no. Mama, mama, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. You need to come out with something beautiful. You need to come out with something glorious. You need to come out with something very, very great and something wonderful. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me, child of God? Let the word of God be established in your heart. Let the word of God be established in your heart so that you will not live for man. You are going to live for God. When everybody have cast you away, you will say, no, 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 no. No, I know what the Bible, the word of God said. Hey, my ma, 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 ma. What is another thing that God to do in such a situation? Another thing that need to happen in such a situation is comfort. Comfort means in Encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. Comfort, 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 comfort is another thing you need to do in the waiting period. You have been in abroad for one year. You don't have a job. Six months, you don't have a job. For last year, you're out of job. People are demanding money from the village. Your brothers, they want to know. They fed your you know, money-making machine. You see, when people are abroad, people, ah, he's living abroad. Oh, the price of things will be different for them. This and that. They don't know that I want to tell you you don't know and if you're not living abroad you're hearing my voice listen to what i'm telling you nobody living abroad is comfortable living there it's because the father's land is not comfortable and fair that's why they run away they are suffering the treatment they are receiving the best way of going abroad is going on a trip go with your money enjoy the holidays and come back even if they fed, they are eating fine. What of the season? God did not make our body for such cold. God allowed those people and created them in such a way. But our people will go there with such a cold, under such pain, under such suffering, and still send something to somebody, and somebody will not be grateful for what they have sent. No, no. They are suffering seriously abroad over there. If you have a brother abroad, keep praying for him. The only difference now is that when he changes the pound, changes the euro, changes the dollar, then he becomes five times, six times, sometimes hundred times or more are there without our, of our money. That's just the comfort they have right now. But here I'm talking about you comfort yourself. You comfort yourself with the word of God. Look at what the Bible said in the Second Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. Verse 17. Second Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. Second Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. The Bible said, comfort your heart and establish you in every good work, word and works. Have you seen it? Comfort your heart. Tell yourself it shall be well. Me, I'll be great too. Me, I am coming again, oh. Me, I am bouncing back to life. I passed a lot of trial period. I'll go to a mirror. I'll point myself at the mirror and say, I've seen that man. I've seen that man that will soon rise. I've seen that man that will shine. I've seen that man that anointing is upon. I've seen that man that the glory of God is upon. I've seen that man that the mercy of God is upon. I have seen that man. I keep pointing myself at the mirror. I begin to see the new anointed man of God. The great anointed man of God. Comfort yourself. Encourage yourself. Child of God, are you hearing what I'm saying? Encourage yourself with the word of God. Encourage yourself that one day I will not continue here in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 18. After St. Paul has spoken, finished working, he said, Wherefore, comfort one another with this word. We shall not all die. All our suffering will not continue. A day is coming when we shall rapture. Verse 17 said, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in them, with them in the cloud, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's a word of comfort. That's a word of comfort. That we will not remain here. Our suffering will not remain forever and ever. Hallelujah. That is a day for you. That is a day of joy. Comfort yourself. The Bible says for everything under the season, there is time for everything. Time to be sick and time to be healed. Are you sick already? Tell yourself there is time to be healed. Time to be embarrassed and time to refrain from embarrassment. Have you been embarrassed? Come on. Time to be down and time to be up. Have you been down now? It's time to be up again. Time to lose and time to gain. Have you been losing? Tell yourself it's time to gain. Are you hearing me? Come on, comfort yourself. Learn how to comfort yourself with the word of God. Learn how to comfort yourself with good words. Comfort yourself. Comfort yourself. Comfort you with one, one another with a very good 
good word. Are you hearing me? That is why St. Paul was rebuking us when we will speak bad words to people. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's learn how to speak good words in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said that I'll be a good comfort. Have you comforted somebody? Have you seen somebody in pain, in trouble, and you comfort the person, and the person become happy and glad? These are the things that we need in the time like this, in a time of such a situation. Philippians chapter 2, verse 19. Philippians chapter 2, verse 19. Philippians chapter 2, verse 19. The Bible says, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know of your stead. Suppose so he wants to comfort himself, knowing that the work of God is doing, is prospering. The people that are born again are living a clean life, are living a holy life, are living a sanctified life, are living a true life, are living a righteous life. Some Paul said, Comfort you, one another with this word comfort you one another oh St. Paul was telling them we are comforted in your comfort so learn how to comfort somebody and you yourself comfort yourself are you hearing me comfort yourself learn how to comfort yourself and tell yourself the word of God you see by the time the Lord Jesus himself was wanting to leave the planet earth he just didn't Go like that. Look at what the Bible said in John chapter 14, verse 16. John chapter 14, verse 16. John chapter 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. That means, that's not what you're passing through. There's a comforter living in you. You can say, comforter, speak to my heart. I'm having a comforter. I'm having God, the Spirit, living in me. God, the Holy Spirit is living in me. Jesus said, he will not allow you to be without a comforter. He said, come on. You can talk to the God, the Father, and say, God, Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, and God will come and comfort you. Hallelujah. Oh, God be praised and glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. You see to that. Do you know that when God comforts you, that's how it goes. As one whose mother have comforted, Okay, look at what even God wants to comfort you. So comfort yourself and speak good words. Look at what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 66 verse 13. 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 The Bible says, And some whom is mother. Okay, okay, if I will start from verse 12. For thus says the Lord. Look at verse 12. Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66 from verse number 12. As that sister says from verse number 12, look at what the Bible says. For thus says the Lord, behold, I will, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. We are the Gentiles. We have this glory like a Then shall you suck, you shall be born upon her side, and be dadling upon her nails. Look at what the Bible said in verse in verse 13. As one whom his mother comforted, so will I comfort you. And you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You'll be comforted in your house. Do you know why he uses the mother? Fathers are not good comforters. Father will when the father talk and you come on. If you don't do it this way, the father will open it up. But mother will comfort you. Oh, beautiful as a mother, gentle as a mother, understanding like a mother. If your mother is still alive, take care of her. If your mother is still alive, feed her. If your mother is still alive, comfort her. That woman labored. That woman suffered for you. Don't waste time in calling your mother. I didn't say you should not be calling your father. But look at where Bible is using the example of a mother. If you missed a mother, another person can stand as a mother in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But you know, the fathers are powerful. When there are troubles, the fathers, mothers will go and fathers will come. When there are things to comfort, the mothers will come and get you comforted. Hallelujah. What are we trying to say? That the mighty hand of God will be there with all. Okay? What is another thing that you got to do when you are having such a period? When you are passing through such experience in life? When you must have prayed? When you must have fasted? When you must have read the word of God? Comfort yourself. Begin to tell yourself, I have a better tomorrow. I have a joyous tomorrow. My tomorrow will be great. My tomorrow will be glorious. My tomorrow will be beautiful. Comfort yourself. Encourage yourself. Begin 
to have plan about yourself. Begin to write down big plan and say, I will be this in my life. I'm going to have this. This will happen to me. Come on, confess things positive for yourself. Are you hearing me? It's not more a crying time. It's not a time again and again and again and again to stay and cry and stay and cry and stay and cry and what is another thing you got to do when you are under such a situation when you are under such a time oh you got to look unto jesus the author and finisher of your faith looking unto jesus the author and finisher of your faith you are going to look unto jesus are you hearing me don't look unto any man don't look unto any woman don't look unto any boy don't look unto any girl looking unto jesus the author and finisher of your faith the author and finisher of your faith. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. The Bible says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was said before him, endured the cross, despised the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You, talk, you look unto him when you are looking unto Jesus in a hard time. When you are looking unto Jesus in a bad situation. When you are looking unto Jesus in a trial time of your life as you're waiting upon the lord as you look unto jesus you will see the glory ahead you will not be seeing the suffering anymore you will not be seeing the value anymore you will not see the tongues anymore you will not see the lion anymore you will not see the devourer anymore you see a finished job you see a crown you see a glory you see the beauty of heaven you see the gift of god you see the hand of god you see the power of god you see the glory of god everywhere hallelujah you look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. You look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Look at the same Hebrew chapter 12, verse 15. It's still advising you. The same Hebrew chapter 12, verse 15. The Bible said, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Ah, let any root of bitterness spring up trouble, trouble or, or, or springing up trouble you. And thereby be defied. No, 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 no. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Are you hearing me? Look unto him. There is life in him. Don't look at any man. Don't look at any woman. How they succeed. No. You got that. The way they succeed, that is not the way God wants you to succeed. Are you hearing me? They may practicalize. They may do one thing. They may manipulate. They may do one thing or the other. The way they succeed is different from the way. Because you are a different person, they are different people altogether. As our faces are different, so our ways are different. We shall not all do the same thing. We shall all not become medical personnel. We shall not all become lawyers. We shall not all become engineers. There are different ways. We shall not all become computer scientists. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We shall not all become preachers, but God wants everybody to preach the word of God. Yet, it does not make you a preacher. Are you hearing me of the word of God? But you've got to preach the word of God. You may got little, little knowledge about other things, but there are special places you must have to specialize. Child of God, Stop crying in that situation. It's a happy time. It's a making time. It's a molding time. It's a uplifting time. It's a joyous time. It's a glorious time. It's a time you and God will remove the chaff in you and the best in you will come. But because you don't want to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, when you're looking unto Jesus, you will turn and become like him. You will turn and become like him. Looking unto him, look at what Jacob used and painted. When animal look at it, they, it will so touch them that they Children, the 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 the, 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 the infants or the unborn children in their belly will turn and become black. Some become white because they are looking. Are you looking unto Jesus? Look unto Jesus. Look unto Him, and then be like Him. When you are looking unto, you say, Ah, Jesus does His hand like this. I didn't do my hand. I am outside. Jesus is inside the glory. Let me get into the glory. When you look at Him, you behave like Him. You do like Him. You walk like Him. And you move like Him. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Child of God, you must look unto Jesus. You must look diligently unto Him. That is what you must do. That is what you must do. I'm, uh, okay. That is what you must do. Hallelujah. You must fix your eyes unto Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the author and finisher 
of your friend, the author and finisher of your friend. At this time, you don't need to defend yourself. Are you hearing me? When people talk, you defend. No, 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 no. Don't talk back to people. It's not time to talk back to people. It's time to look unto Jesus. It's time to talk to God. It's time to tell him, Lord, I know who you are. You are the one that I trusted. You are the one that is my God. You are the one that is my everything. I believe in you. You are my everything. Then, when you're trusting God like that, when you're believing Him like that, and saying, God, you have been my everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe in who you are. I believe the power of God. Mmm. Glorious things will happen. And good things will happen. And finally, for tonight, brethren, we're ending this message today. If you have not shared this, share it to a lot of people. Let them get it. You must live a holy life. Somebody can read the Bible. In such a period of trial period and waiting upon the Lord that God might break him. You can read the Bible, you can fast, you can read, you know, pray, you can comfort yourself. But what a holy life when you are living a holy life. Remember every step of your life is in a record. Are you living a clean life? Are you living a holy life? Are you living a pure life? The Bible have diligently told us this whether we like it or not. The Bible remains the word of God. The Bible has clearly told us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 14, that we shall follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. No man shall see the Lord. No man shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no man, no woman shall see the Lord. Have you seen it? Have you heard what the Bible, the word of God said? Therefore, we must live a holy life. We must live a clean heart. We must live a life of righteousness, a life of cleanliness, a life of kingdom. Kingdom life and live a life of kingdom authority. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must pattern your life in such a way that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. That you will be filled with the glorious Son of God. Oh, my, 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 my. Look at what the Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That's talking about holiness. Somebody can just do all this thing, but destroy it and spoil it by living in a house life. When somebody wants to talk, you talk again. Is it because you're feeding me all this way? You think I'm going to remain like this? Don't worry. God will lift me up. I will deal with you. I will handle you. I will one day remind you what you did to me. What you said to me today, today, one day, I'm going to remind you. No, 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 no. Live a holy life, a forgiving life. Remember, holiness is just not all about physical dressing. It is first of all, starting with the inside dressing, putting on the glory of God inside of you, putting on the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth inside of you, it will reflect outside, it will reflect in the way you love people, it will reflect the way you communicate with people, it will reflect the way you forgive people. So many will cover their hand and their eyes and whatever, but they will never forgive. They have a hardened heart, they pray a very bad prayer on somebody because you did this to me, you will fail, it shall not be well with you. What you do, cause when Bible says you should bless, learn how to bless and stop cursing people, learn how to bless and stop cursing people. Let's stand upon the word of God for the word of God is life and what. Of God is power for the word of God is forever settled in heaven. Forever, oh God, the word is settled in heaven. Forever, the word is settled in heaven, oh Lord. We give you praise and worship you. Thank you for this topic you have given to us. We have done justice to that. I don't know whosoever that is passing through a time. Have you been passing through a time waiting for God when God is the one that is waiting for you to start praying? When God is the one that is waiting for you to start fasting? In fact, you give excuse. One woman, one woman came, uh, a husband and wife came. I gave them praying and fasting to do and they begin to give me excuse. They told me, ah, the man said, ah, also, also want to destroy me. The woman said, ah, also, I said, do praying and fasting. For three days. They did it. The man of God said, We'll do it. Let's do it if we want to die. They went and do it. And by the time they came back, they told me the author has gone. Who is that person that is hindering you from seeking the face of the Lord? The joy of the Lord is swimming in the spirit. Are you hearing me? When you must have read the Bible, you pray, you fast, you comfort yourself. Are you hearing me? You look unto Jesus and you live a practical, holy, clean life, and then it shall be well with you. The word of God has gone forth to you. Are you the one waiting for God or God waiting for you? God is waiting for you to rise in prayer, sister. Are you hearing me? God, I don't know what I've done. No. Get up in prayers. Yes. 
Whenever you have prayed and prayed and prayed, you can even move off evangelism and tell the people of the goodness of the Lord. One sister had been sick, terribly sick. Hospital couldn't pick her case. Her case was terribly, 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 terribly sick, terribly, terribly wonderful. And before you understand it, she summoned up her courage to be going to evangelism. She was going to, sometimes she feel like fainting. Sometimes she feel like falling down. So she said, let me fall in a, let me fall down in preaching the word of God. And today she's healed, today she's made whole, today she's walking around. Don't say that God, you're waiting for God. God is waiting for you to come up. Anytime you have done it, God will say, come on, let's go. And you move together. May the great grace of God come upon your life. May your eye be open to this message so that you know that it's not God that is waiting, but uh, uh, no more you that is waiting, but God is waiting for you to be broken, waiting for you to be made who he wants you to be, to be a real seed of God, a seed of God with unrighteousness, a seed of God with peace and joy, a seed of God that's serving God without complaint, a seed of God that's serving God with all the zeal and openness of heart, a seed of God that is not being forced to pray, that is not being forced to do this, but you flow in the supernatural with the glory of God. Hallelujah. You know, life, life of heaven is supernatural. But you can live supernatural naturally here on earth. When you're moving with the glory of God, you live supernaturally here on earth as a natural way of life. May the great grace of God come upon you. May God keep you by the power of his mind. May you be a child of God. May you never miss heaven. Shall we begin to pray? Can we begin to talk to God and say, God, I've been passing through hard time. I've been passing through experience in life. Now do I know that I've been taking your time. Now do I know I've not prayed the way I ought to pray. I've not fasted the way I need to fast. I've not digged and searched the Bible the way I'm supposed to search the scripture. I've not made a personal Bible study of myself. My King, my God, my Lord, my Father, my Master, my Comfort, my Consolation. Now you have spoken to me, O oh God, that I have the right to speak life into myself, to confess positively about myself. True, will I start it right now? That I will no more pity myself. I will stop defending myself. Yes, Lord, I will comfort myself and I will live a holy life. I will live a clean life. I will live a pure life. I will not blame God. God, why did you do this? If you are God, why did this thing happen? If you are God, why this and why did No, 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 I'm not going to do that anymore. But the great grace of God will be upon my life. God of mercy will visit me. God of love will show me love and God of mercy will show me mercy. And the name of Christ alone shall be glorified forevermore. Hallelujah. We give you all the praise, O Lord. Every dominion and thanksgiving, every worship of mind, exhortation, reality, dignity, to the name of the great I am that I am. For unto you be all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We bless you, God. Can you begin to pray? Thank you, Father. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your excellent power. Thank you for your glorified grace. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, my Master and my Lord. My Karabra in the Shiria Baba Baba. Here we are, Mama Rambra in the Shiria Baba La Rabra Kinda Dada. Maseri Bakanda Shiria Mama. Moons Rehindori Baba La Rabra Kanda Situriba. That the mighty hand of God, a merciful hand of God, rest upon your life. Make you a mighty, shining, glorious child of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I begin to pray for you. Do you want to join us? Do you want to live that glorious life? Do you want to enjoy what we're enjoying in Christianity and what we're enjoying in Christ? Can you stay outside? No. If you want to come in, we want to lift up the gate here now for you. God have made us the gate openers. We want to open the gate of salvation for you right now. God have made salvation and make us to be the gate opener. Make us to make God have made every child of God to be a gate man of salvation. When you close your mouth, you are closing salvation. When you open your mouth, come on. The gate of salvation is open and people can come in. If you now want to join us, I want to be a seed of God. Can you say after me, can you say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry I am a sinner. I've done it my own way. I repent of all my sins. Give me grace tonight, O Lord. To be your child. I am sorry of all my sins. Right now, oh Lord. I receive you, Lord Jesus. As my Lord and Savior. Give me grace. To be your child. Now and forevermore. Amen. I pray for you that great grace of God will come upon you.
I pray that God forgive me from all those sins. You know, you confess your sin. You confess to go back to the same sin. It's not good. Stand upon your word. You have said, Jesus, I'm a child of God. You have said, Jesus, I'm born again. May God give you grace to remain a true seed of God. May God give you grace to remain seed of righteousness in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Blessed be the name of Jesus. May you never be useless in life. As men that have listened to this word of God, in any way you have been going astray, may God help you to adjust. 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 Adjust in purity, adjust in cleanliness, adjust in righteousness. You cannot be idle. Heaven will employ you into prayer ministry. Heaven will employ you into evangelism ministry. The work of God will employ you. The devil will say, no, let me make him busy. You don't know the devil make a lot of people very busy by making them to overwork. My king and God, have your way. Look at that brother. Look at that sister calling upon your name. Cleansing his heart, cleansing her heart. Welcome him again to your glory and mercy. Uh, somebody's talking now. The person is spiritually empty. You're just empty in the spirit. But you want to be refilled. You know, the presence of God is no more with you. I pray for refilling right now. I pray for refilling right now. You, now you have poured out your heart tonight to God. I pray for God to refill you. The glory to refill you. His mercy to refill you. His visitation to refill you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May God most I refill you. May God the most excellent refill you. May God most precious refill you. And let his glorious hand refill you up. May you be refilled by the merciful hand of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be filled with power. Be filled with mercy. Be filled with his glory. Makarabra in the center of The glorious hand of God upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May God Almighty visit you. May his glory visit you. May his unto and high power visit you. May his magnified grace visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you be losing from chains of ignorance. Every chain of ignorance the devil have used to wrap you around. You're accusing God. You're blaming God. You're blaming this person. Blame nobody anymore. But right now, your situation has been blamed. And let it get off your life. In the name of Jesus. May the great grace of God come your way. May God of honor, power, might, and majesty visit you and show you signs and wonders and miracles. And may the name of Christ be glorified. For unto the Lord be all that glory. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. May you have new peace. May you have new joy. May you have a new beginning. May God open doors for you. Yeah! Ba 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 I pray for you that God visit you, his glory visit you, his mercy visit you, his hand visit you right now, and you be who God wants you to be in the wonderful name of Jesus. To God be all the glory as his great grace fall upon you, as his miraculous hand walk upon you, and Christ's name alone be glorified now and forevermore in the name of Jesus. It is well, and the glory of God is upon you. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. His peace is upon you. Tonight, your eyes is open. This morning, your eyes open. This evening, your eyes is open. Tonight, this afternoon, your eyes is open. And God of favor has shown you favor. You are not alone in that case. God is there with you. And His mercy is all over your life. To Him be every glory forever and ever. In the wonderful name of Jesus. God bless you. I got to see you again Sunday morning. We got to talk again together by Sunday morning by the divine grace of God. Yeah, by 9 p.m. 9 a.m. Nigerian time. 9 in the morning. God will keep you and God will bless you. And on Monday, we got to see you again by 7 p.m. Nigerian time. 7 in the evening. And on Wednesday, 7 p.m. again Nigerian time. Tell other people, let's continue this word. Those of you that God have been using to keep us online. Buying the data we are using. Buying up the 10. Make sure we're in the air. God will keep you. God will bless you. God will keep honoring those of you that are sharing this message. God will bless you as well. All of you that don't want to know that. Those of you that are praying for all God can keep you and bless you and may Christ's name be glorified in Jesus name God bless you if you can apply this method you will overcome every situation happily and gladly and the joy of the Lord will remain your strength be blessed and be favored in Jesus name we pray amen God bless you I love you all I feel like not stopping I just love you all I know Jesus loves you far more than I do God Bless you. Amen.